Welcome to this week's Smart Idea. This week's idea is entitled, A Calorie is Not a Calorie. Have you heard a well-intentioned friend or family member say, low-carb eating is just another fad diet. It doesn't work any better than our status quo, low-fat eating. Much of that thinking is based on the old calories in, calories out model. That a calorie is a calorie, and the only way to lose weight and get healthier is to expend more calories than you consume, without much regard for the types of food you eat. During one of our recent Metabolic Classroom episodes entitled Insulin Alters Metabolic Rate, Dr. Bickman addressed this idea. With strictly within the realm of physics, which is where that concept is born and where I think it should have stayed, uh, I, I, a calorie is a calorie. If we're talking about this, this metric of measuring heat as a form of energy, then it is a calorie is a calorie. But when people invoke that concept and uh, in, in within a biological organism, things start to fall apart. So the, the idea is, of course, the pervasive idea is that if you want to control your body fat, you need to simply be in a state of negative caloric balance. Um, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with that idea in principle, but I would disagree with how people apply that idea of a calorie versus a calorie, because then it leads to the old tired uh, idea and advice of eat less, exercise more, which just hasn't gotten us anywhere. In, in the biological organism, if we overlook the, the, what hormones do to the body, then we are missing what I argue is a very relevant piece of the puzzle. And that's because insulin tells the body what to do with energy, especially it tells fat cells what to do with energy. Hormones are a critical and often overlooked piece of this metabolic puzzle, specifically the hormone insulin. But if insulin is elevated, the fat cell is storing fat. It, in a way, it doesn't matter what the calories are. If insulin is up, the fat cell is storing fat. Now, when insulin's low, what's so interesting about that state is that the, the body can't help but burn. When insulin is low, the body cannot help itself. The cells can't help themselves. They must be burning. They must be breaking down and using the energy, even to the point that the body is burning more fat than it needs. And, and this is most obviously manifested in the liver. When insulin is low, the body and the liver starts burning fat. It can't help it. If insulin is low, it can't help it. But if insulin stays low, it still can't help burning fat, but it's, now it's burning more fat than the, than the cells need the energy from that fat burning. And now we start to produce ketones. Ketones really are like this exhaust valve, this pressure valve, when the liver can't stop burning fat, which it can't help but do when insulin is low. As I said, it's burning more fat than it needs, and now it starts producing ketones. Ket so with today's standard low-fat, high-carb eating, insulin levels are kept high and almost independent of calories, your body stores fat. On the other hand, with low carb eating, insulin levels stay low and almost independent of calories, your body burns fat. So are calories still important? Yes, of course they are, but calories are only one piece of a much larger puzzle. Now, if your well-intentioned friend or family member, or perhaps even your doctor needs proof, click on the link provided with this video to the 67 randomized controlled trials compiled by the UK's public health collaboration. These studies are the gold standard, not correlational studies based on observational data through epidemiology, comparing low carb diets to status quo low fat diets. 58 of the 67 clinical studies showed low carb eating to be far more effective than low fat, high carb eating in both weight loss and in helping people get healthier. And that's this week's smart idea.